to make sure that our current camera solution is the accurate one, we are going to branch out from the footage and see if the traditional way that we know in solving a shot will give us the same camera movement. So let's see how to do that. After those user tracks, combined with the auto tracks, I'm going into lens distortion, undistort, and in here I'm going to click on new line and I'm going to see where exactly I have some good lines that I can try to follow. So I'm going to put my first dot of the line here and then right there and there's a tiny bit of distortion coming over here and looking at the edges of the frame there might be some distortion as well on these pipes so I'm gonna click on new line and pointing out where these supposed to be and now where the distortion occurs. Uh, if I did everything correct I can now click on solve. So we got a low order distortion of 0.161 and after the distortion let's right click on the undistort go to the solving camera solver and in here we're going to switch the translation to medium smooth and the rotation to medium smooth because this is a handheld shot and I'm also going to my constraints let's just turn off the gr ground for now and under the constraints I'm going to create a new plane constraint and by choosing the marquee tool I can select all these trackers on the ground and say add to once I click on the add to it's going to tell PF track that these trackers are sitting on the ground so once these are selected add to and I got all those trackers that I've highlighted straight here. So now it will be easier for PF Track to figure out where the floor plane is. So going back to the camera tab, and now let's click on Solve All. So I got trackers that cause some serious residual errors, and I can see that in my solution here, I got the majority of red trackers. So I'm going to turn off the marquee tool and here under the error tab I can just click drag and select all those trackers that gives me really high spikes and then I can go into the tracker tabs and say deactivate and I'll go back to the error tab and I got this tracker and trackers deactivate errors again and this spike go to trackers and then deactivate. Now we can go and click either on solve all or refine all. But let's click on solve all. So the errors now are much more manageable and if I click on fit view I'll notice that the majority of my errors don't go over two pixels. But I still have some issues with some spikes here. So for example this tracker going back to my trackers and deactivate and then under the errors I got this group of trackers and then going back to the tracker tab deactivate and now I can solve all again. So now I got more of a manageable solution and in here now I can also take the trim in order to trim those trackers that are a bit problematic. And now I can click on refine all and I have a much better solution than I had before. I see that my camera solution is extremely close to the one I got in our original workflow. So that means that the geometry track did a good job solving the camera. So the next step after the geometry track would be to orient the scene. So we saw that when we solved the shot in a traditional way, we got similar camera movement as we did with the object tracking method. So now it's time to move forward. 